I'm a man, too. Uh, I'm 92, 93 years old. I went to school in Blockhouse for three years. Two years, a little over two years, I guess it was. How many? Well, I don't know how many was upstairs, but there was 54 in the room downstairs where I was in. 54, one teacher. One teacher. I only went 16, 17 days, I think, in, in the seventh grade. And that was all the school you had? That's all the school I ever had. After that, I learned for myself. Well, I worked there, and, and I the, worked my father in the woods and so on. I, well, I got married when I was 20. I used to figure around a lot with the old cars, that I did. My father had a car, and I, and I used to work with other people around there had old cars, and I used to work at them. I was, my uncles, they had old cars. When they lived back, they lived back there where Randall lived, lived. and uh, I used to spend a lot of time there. And they was always working at the cars, and I was, I was in the grease with them too. But there wasn't many cars; we didn't have to be scared too much scared of cars. Mm -hmm. But there were a few. A few, yes. There was uh, there a bunch of Ernst boys back here. They were rum runners. They had cars, big cars too. All the doctors had cars, and the ministers and them kind of people. Had cars. Say what I done love it from my time when I was, I was 15 years old. From the time I was 15 years till I was 15, 17, 18, 19, I carried kegs of rum on my shoulder. My father, we stored it up there for the rum runners. Okay, and. They wanted you to store it because they were afraid the police were going to raid them. Yeah, they, 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 it was a fall in the bay. They used to get his, the stuff would come in my boat. There was one guy used to get another full of truck, a ton Ford truck. They'd bring a load of that rum up there. We'd load it on the ox wagon and haul it back in the woods. But as time went on, they caught on. Yeah, the word got around. And the first thing, there was police up there. Well, they searched that place and searched that place and searched it, but they never found them. Why didn't they find it? Because they didn't get where it was. Well, of course. <laughs> of course we, took it, we took it further than they'd go. But Did knew. anybody get caught that you knew personally? No, not too often they ever got caught. Except I did. You got caught? Yeah. How did you get caught? Well, when I lived in my home bay, the three years I spent the, the time I worked in the service station down there, I bootlegged city. In the city? Stiddy, Stiddy, I bootlegged all, all the time. I was down there. The, the old barge shed in my home bay was running. It was built in barges. And I had a crew of Newfoundlanders with my customers. All great fellows. So I I lived down there. You know, do you know what it was what they call Swiggers Inn? Yes. Well, I lived in the back of that, and I bootlegged. I had an old car, and uh, I used to buy my liquor. They had a cop in the bay. Well, I used to take have, take my liquor across. I, the liquor store was right across from the service station there, where the, where the Pentecostal church is now. I could carry my liquor, go over to the liquor store, bring it, bring it over there, and keep it there until I was ready to go home. The cop used to come in and open up my case of beer, a case of beer, take a bottle out, and drink it, and, and not, I didn't have to worry about him. He used to use my, he had no car. He used to use my car. He used to, had to make a, a trip around, or come up and go around Clearland, go up around and come down over the old cemetery there and come around. He had to make one trip a day doing that. He used to use my car to do it. So I didn't have to worry about the cops. And I got away with that for all the while I was down there. I left my home bay, and moved, when I moved to come here, that's what started. I had seventeen hundred dollars I had put in the bank in that while, and that's what I started this house with. 
But somebody in Blockhouse squealed. I still kept moved like that when I get up here. But somebody in Blockhouse squealed on me some quick. And they come and they raided me. So the Mounties community, the police community, but no one's going to police that day. Anyway, they put the call Mounties. They come in and took my liquor. Said, you might as well give it to us. We're going to search to get it. So I, where I had, what I had in the building over there, I took it all out and I took, brought it all down and gave it to them. I had it above the steps. As the steps into it, it was a little alleyway upstairs. I gave it all to them. But I still had enough saved to pay my fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so I went out and I pleaded guilty to a fine, to it, two hundred and two dollars and twenty five cents. So I paid him the two hundred dollars and I come home and I sold the rest of the liquor that I had. I got my money, that might have been my money back anyway. And I quit. That was it. How did I meet my wife? Well, that's another one. <laughs> You'll never believe it. <laughs> well, I was, let's see, 16 years old. Them days they used to have big conventions when they, for politicians, elect, for election. So they had a convention in Lunenburg. Them days you could take an old truck, put seats under the back of it, and go up the country and pick up the people and take them to the places for the, where they hold these big conventions. How I got to Lunenburg that day, I don't know. But anyway, when it was all over, I got on this truck to go, and I was going to Cornwall. And I'm going, and she got on, was on the same truck, her and another girl, her next door next to her neighbors, down in Oakland. And they landed up in Cornwall. We went. I didn't even get off at home. I went right up to the end to, and, and got off on the way back. They went way up to the upper end of Cornwall. And I, and I got down home. The time I got down home, everybody was off of that truck but me and them two girls. And he was drinking. The driver? The driver. And they were scared. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't blame them. So they... I don't know how they got, I was, I got, was talking. They wanted to know how they was going to get home. I went up and asked them if I could have the car to take the skills home. This was 11 o'clock in the night. And I took them home, and that's the start of it. Four years. I used to go to the bay to see her. Bicycle, walk, any damn way I could get there when I didn't have a car. Her people didn't like me. They, she had a sister that had done everything against me that she could. She got me caught one night. I, when I did, after I had come, I was driving, I come down the road. I had a bottle in my pocket with rum in it. And the police had the road blocked up there for me. I couldn't get past. If I had something I had today, I'd go through them. <laughs> I smashed the bottle on the dash of the car. They mopped it up in a handkerchief. And I went to court. 60 days in jail. I don't know what they had against me. She, her, her mother even chased me to the road with a stick down there a couple of times in the garden of Tottenham when they used to go down. I done that. 
And I'd still go down. It didn't make no difference. It didn't make a damn bit of difference. I was going. I had my mind. I was. Going. <laughs> so I done my. I done my six. I done. I didn't do sixty days in jail. I done forty in the Lunenburg jail. Too bad they didn't have jails for that now. They wouldn't be so damn anxious to get in. Cause I pull. I I I helped to break rock that was in the old jail over there. They had a big building, and they, they brought in big rocks. And the, the big guy, if there was a big guy in there, man, that stood over six feet or something, they gave him a 14-pound hammer. And I, you imagine, tried to pick that up. And, and he broke up big rocks. And we was outside, it was a uh, canvas curtain all the way around. We was outside of that, sitting in the corners with a small rock, and then breaking little rock, breaking other rocks up on top of it. We could sit down and smash these rocks and break up that stuff and build that jail out there. I told you the story about my mother died. I was 20 years old. And that was when, right first when I got married. I was only married a couple months. She made fire with the cook stove and poured, went to pour kerosene oil into it. The can was empty. The fire went in the can and blowed the can and all the pieces. Set our fire, all the clothes on. I heard my wife and I was in bed. I jumped out of bed, but she was gone out past, out through the hall, past my door, the door where my bedroom was, our bedroom was. And she was right out the front door, and she was out in, walking around in front of the house, all the flames in the snow, with a little bit of snow on the ground. And all our clothes burned off her. That doctor, the same doctor that put me to bed afterwards, he up there, he wrapped her in gauze. Them days there was no going to the hospital or nobody to take you to the hospital. They wrapped, he wrapped her in gauze so that she didn't fall apart. And she lived till the next morning. I tell you, it was something to see.